Black-owned business districts developed in cities and towns across the country during the Jim Crow era. The most prominent black business district in North Carolina, and one of the most prominent in the country, was Durham's Black Wall Street, located on Parrish Street downtown. The center of black commerce in Durham originated in the Haytai District, but expanded when Mechanics and Farmers Bank and North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company opened on Parrish Street. MNF Bank, established by a group of seven African-American businessmen, is one of the first African-American-owned banks in the U.S. NC Mutual, founded by John Merrick and Aaron Moore, later expanded by Charles Spaulding, was at one point considered the world's largest African-American business. Both are still in business today, but desegregation and urban renewal campaigns resulted in the demolition of older businesses to make way for newer construction. On November 10, 1898, after months of race-baiting speeches from powerful state Democrats and newspaper editorials including those from News & Observer publisher Josephus Daniels, organizers led an armed white supremacist mob into black neighborhoods and businesses in Wilmington, killing between 60 and 300 black residents. The mob torched property and sent thousands of people into hiding, then replaced blacks serving in local leadership positions with more conservative whites. Incorrectly portrayed for decades as the white suppression of a black uprising, the Wilmington Massacre remains the only successful coup against an elected government in U.S. history. The struggle for fair and equal treatment of blacks in the United States, highlighted by the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s, made its gains through thousands of grassroots efforts across the country. One of the most significant events of the civil rights movement was the lunch counter sit-in at the Greensboro F.W. Woolworth store that began on February 1, 1960. That afternoon, four black students from nearby a and State University bought items at the downtown store and then took seats at the whites-only lunch counter. Their requests for service were ignored and the manager closed the store early. They returned the next day with more students and continued to come back with growing support of churches and community members. News stories about the Greensboro sit-in inspired similar actions in dozens of other cities and drew attention to the injustice of Jim Crow laws that kept blacks from using libraries, parks, swimming pools, theaters, and even water fountains in the same way as whites. By appealing to students, sit-ins drew young people into the civil rights movement. They also demonstrated the power of nonviolent resistance to institutionalized oppression. Polly Murray, one of the most important figures you've never heard of in African-American history, grew up in Durham, but impacted the lives of black people and women across the nation. As a young college graduate seeking to attend graduate school, Murray was denied entry to the University of North Carolina because of her race, and later denied entry to Harvard because of her gender. Fueled by the injustices of Jim Crow, Murray earned advanced degrees from Howard and Berkeley and became the first African-American to earn a doctorate of jurisprudence at Yale University. She was arrested before Rosa Parks for refusing to move to the back of a bus traveling from New York City to Durham. She helped launch the National Organization for Women. Later in life, she became the first African-American woman to be vested as an Episcopal priest. In North Carolina, a study of African-American first would be incomplete without considering. Harriet Jacobs, who was born in Edenton and escaped slavery to go on to write one of the first narratives about the struggle for freedom by female slaves. Shaw University, the first historical black college in the South. St. Agnes Hospital, a hospital on the grounds of St. Augustine's from 1896 to 1961, housing the first nursing school in the state for African Americans. Judge Henry Fry, the first African American Chief Justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court. Walter Buck Leonard, who grew up in Greensboro and became one of the first African-American baseball greats, earning the nickname the Black Lou Gehrig. Julius Chambers, a civil rights icon who was the University of North Carolina School of Law Review's first black editor-in-chief. John Baker, the first African-American sheriff in North Carolina after Reconstruction, serving Wake County for almost 24 years. The world knew her as Nina Simone, but North Carolina first knew her as Eunice Kathleen Wayman, born in Tryon on February 21, 1933. Eunice showed a gift for the piano at an early age and dreamed of becoming a concert pianist. Her shift from classical to popular music was purely one of financial necessity, and she took the stage name Nina Simone to hide her work in nightclubs from her Methodist minister mother. Her songwriting in the 1960s conveyed a strong social message 
as she became active in the civil rights movement. Among her most well-known songs is the one she wrote after the Birmingham bombings in 1963, Mississippi God Down. Here are just a few other influential African-American artists with North Carolina ties. Jazz saxophone legend John Coltrane was born in Hamlet and grew up in High Point. Composer and pianist Thelonious Monk was born in Rocky Mount. Durham native Betty Mabry Davis and Kannapolis native George Clinton are considered two of the most important funk musicians in American history. Blues guitarist Elizabeth Liva Cotton, born near Chapel Hill, was known for her signature playing style, which came to be called cotton picking. Durham native Shirley Caesar is considered the first lady of gospel music. Fayetteville's J. Cole was the first hip hop artist in 25 years to go double platinum without any guest features. Winston Salem's Ninth Wonder is one of the most influential hip hop producers in the world. In 2007, he was named Artist in Residence at North Carolina Central University in Durham. Mm -hmm.